What's going on, guys? It's November 25th, 2020. It's about 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And today's episode is going to be a little bit different because I want to talk about the behind the scenes part of this business. I want to talk about the money I've spent, the money I've spent on Facebook ads, the money I've spent on equipment. I want to talk about how that's translated into revenue. I want to talk about the motivation behind starting the business, the challenges. I just want to talk about how this all came about. And the reason I want to do so is because I know so many people out there, so many people have asked me, and so many people out there, they feel like they want to do something like this. They want to start a business. They want to step out of their norm, and they want to get something going that they have a passion about. Well, I hope this helps to motivate you by showing you the real parts of this, not just the old uh, shiny, nice, glistening parts, you know, the parts that make it seem so great. I want you to really understand what it took, at least what it took me to get this going. So I hope you enjoyed the episode and let's get to it. All right, so where do we start? Backyard Movie Theaters, LLC. Let's start with the name. I came up with the name of the business by first having the idea, of course, to open the business. I said that, um, Back in high school, if you've watched any of my previous videos, I worked at a movie theater. I always wanted to open up one myself. So it started with a passion, not just to open a theater, but I enjoy movies and I enjoy other people watching movies. I don't know. It's just something about cinemas that I love. And I've always had a passion for that. So it started with a passion. I knew I wanted to do this. The pandemic came and then it was about timing. People could not get out to be entertained. They couldn't go to bars. They couldn't go to the movie theaters. They couldn't get out to be entertained. We had a full lockdown in uh, Maryland and Baltimore and throughout the country. You had full lockdown in so many cities and so many places. And I thought, well, how can I fulfill a need right now that the theaters can't do, you know, fulfill that the uh, bars and restaurants can't fulfill? How can I help people be entertained? Therefore, I had the idea of, you know what? You always wanted to open a movie theater. You always wanted to do this. Now is the time because you can't get a better uh, field, a better environment to do so. So I did so. Now let's get into the money. OK, so I had the motivation and we'll get back into that a little bit later in terms of having the motivation, the courage to overcome fears and to move forward. I'll get into that. But I want to get into the money really quickly because that's one of the most frequent questions I get. They want to know how people want to know how much money did I spend to start this business? Well, here are a few uh, facts I'll throw out there. OK, number one, I didn't use credit. I didn't use any loans. I used the money that I had again set to the side and it wasn't all for bills. It could have been more for bills, but I had money set to the side. Some of my money was sitting in investment accounts. And I said, you know what? I'm going to put this to use for this business because it's going to generate some income for me and it's going to help me do something that I enjoy. So I took out some money and moved it over. I'm a researcher by nature. So I looked on Google Analytics. You know, I looked at trends and I wanted to see what people were searching for. And I find that one of the most frequent uh, search terms and phrases in uh, Google when it came to movie, when it came to movies was backyard movie theaters. Some of it was how to build a backyard movie theater. Some of it was just uh, drive in and backyard movie theaters. But I saw it again and again and again and again. This is what people were searching for. So the name of my company, Backyard Movie Theaters LLC, came from you, from the people. I just follow what you were searching. OK, it's not an ego thing. It's not a thing of, you know, um, you know, I came up with such a great name because it just made perfect sense. No, what made sense was to listen to you. So starting a business in this field when it comes to entertainment, when I want people to come to my business, starts with listening to you, using the tools that are available to me and listening to you. And by the way, even though I do have a background in finance, I also have a background and in movie theaters. I also have a background in marketing. OK, my actual degree that I got from Bowie State University at HBCU was in uh, business marketing. So. I do have a background in these things. It didn't just happen out of nowhere. It didn't just come out of nowhere in terms of looking at things in this manner. So again, guys, uh, I came up with the name from looking at search trends. OK, so now we have a name. What's the next step? Well, I have to file for an LLC to be official. So I spent about 200 plus bucks, filed for my LLC, and I also got my tax ID number. So let's just say I spent 250 to do all of that. OK, once I had all of that, I needed a domain. So I paid another $10 to get my domain. So I have my domain name. Uh, backyard movie, backyard uh, theaters, 
LLC.com. I had everything set up and I was ready to move forward. But that's not all you have to do, okay? That's just setting up the basis of the business. I still had to figure out, well, how am I going to show movies, okay? It's great to have a name. It's great to have a concept. How am I going to show movies? So my first thought wasn't, okay, what's the best uh, screen to get? What's the best uh, chairs to get? You know, which are the best chairs to get? It, my first thought was, when operating, how do you maximize time? I knew because I understood projectors, I understood how they worked, that you could only show movies during the nighttime, okay? If you go to Benji's Drive-In, which has been a drive-in theater that I've uh, attended since I was a child, you could only watch shows when it got dark. That's just how it goes, okay? You need it to be dark. I don't care how powerful of a projector you have, you need it to be dark to show movies. So I wanted to overcome that issue because that was limiting money. I knew that in the summertime, not everyone wants to wait until the nighttime to have a birthday party for their kids. Not everybody wants to wait until the evening to watch a movie. Some people want to do things in the afternoon. So the first thought I thought was, um, how do I make that happen? How do I make that a reality? And I didn't have the answer, but I started buying stuff. Okay, I said, well, of course, no matter what, you need a projector screen. So I bought an inflatable projector screen, which was about a 20 foot screen. The reason I went with 20 foot instead of 14, 15 is because as a person that has a real estate background, I understand how big most walls are in homes. And I wanted to have a screen that was larger than what people could show on their walls in home. Because the point of going to a movie theater is to go to a screen, a bigger screen, to see things on a bigger screen than what you see inside of your home. So I consciously was like, you know what, 20 feet, I know what size walls are. I know how things are set up in most people's homes, at least in this area. Let me start with 20 feet because that'll be enticing because it'll look bigger than anything most people have seen outside of going to a theater. So I got my 20 foot inflatable screen. I spent roughly $220 at that time for it and it came with the blower. So I have my screen, um, the projector, I already had one. Okay, I'm a person, again, I love movies. I had a projector in the basement. It's an HD projector, it works pretty fine. I knew I would have to upgrade at some point, but I started off, I didn't have to spend more money on the projector, I had that. The next bit of money that I had to spend, let me think, um, I had my projector, I had my screen, I had my uh, LLC, so we're close to like 500 bucks total right now. But I also uh, thought about chairs. That was the next thing. I was thinking about the competition very early on because I said, you know what, Joe, this is a great idea. It makes sense, but someone else is gonna think of the same idea. So how do you differentiate yourself? How do you make yourself a great brand? And the chairs. And how did I come up with that idea? Again, working in the theater, going to theaters, how you sit comfortably for hours matters, okay? Metal folding chairs, even though they're compact, they're easy to move around, they're not comfortable for a theater setting. They're not comfortable when you want to sit down for an hour or two, maybe three, and watch a movie. So what's the most comfortable way to watch a movie? Usually it's through lounge chairs. And I thought about, okay, what's the most compactable lounge chair that's available? It's zero gravity lounge chairs. Okay, you can fold them. I could fit them in my car, you know, which I had to use in the very beginning, not a van, but I could fit them in my car. And it worked out pretty well. So I found a bunch of zero gravity lounge chairs for sale because when I was looking at them back in July, they were about 80 or 90 bucks a piece. And most, uh, most places were sold out because Father's Day had just passed and so many people got their fathers these chairs. So I started to check uh, Facebook Marketplace and I found people selling them for 20, $25 and they were selling six at a time and sometimes eight at a time. And eventually I got 12 chairs and I probably spent roughly 150 to 175 for all those chairs. So I was at 500, that puts me at like 725 total in terms of money spent. Make sure you calculate, make sure you're keeping this together because I want you to know again how much money I spent in the very beginning before I earned one penny. So 725, so now I have chairs and those chairs also, I was like, you know, these are chairs that can have their own trays. I had to pay for the trays. The trays were about five to six bucks each. No, no, in fact, they were about 10 bucks each. And I bought 12 trays, so I spent another $120 on trays. So now we're from $750 per se to $870. So let's just make it $900. You know, after taxes, everything else is $900. Bucks. With $900, bucks, I have a screen, I have chairs, I have trays, I have my projector. But I still had to produce sound, okay? One of the other elements when it comes to watching movies is you need to have something that produces sound. At the time... I was thinking two ways. I said, okay, I don't want to get too 
so many big speakers because when it comes to traveling around in my car, I can't fit a bunch of big speakers and all this other equipment because, again, I don't have a van at this time. Also, you don't want too many big speakers because I didn't want there to be complaints from neighbors. I didn't want to create issues for people who live in residential neighborhoods that have homes connected to themselves, which is the majority of homes in Baltimore City and in the Baltimore metropolitan area. Again, I'm a real estate guy, so I know these things this is where other information helps to, you know, when you're deciding to put together a business, even though, again, I operate in Maryland, I operate in Pennsylvania and also operate in Virginia. But immediately in the immediate area that I was in, I knew I would be operating there. So I bought some speakers. I bought uh, these two uh, Bluetooth speakers, which cost about 50, bu 50 bucks a piece. They produce pretty good bass. They're loud enough. So they got the job done. So I spent 50 bucks on those. And I also bought some extension cords to make sure that they could connect to the aux uh, cord in my projector. So let's just say I spent another 15 on that. So that was another 115. We we're at a little bit over 800 towards 900. So we're a little over $1,000 now. I should say we're a little over $1,000 now. I have sound. I have chairs, I have the screen, I have a projector, I have all these things, but I wasn't done. When I think about going to the theater, there's a certain nostalgia to it. There's a certain thing that makes you feel like you're about to enjoy a movie, and it's the smell of popcorn. So I knew I had to get me a popcorn popper. And again, popcorn poppers, for the size I wanted, for the quality I wanted, they were running about 70 to 80 bucks. I went on Facebook Marketplace and I found one for $25. So somebody sold me their popcorn maker for $25. And also being that I have experience in the movie theater, I knew what type of seasoning I needed to buy for my popcorn to make sure to have a buttery flavor. I didn't get it initially. When I first started my shows, I didn't have this, but about a month into it, I did get it. So I let's just say I spent another 50 bucks on that. So now we're at 1200. Okay. 1200 bucks. I have all of that. And now I'm getting back to my original question and my original problem that I wanted to overcome. How does this make you uh, more available during the daytime? And I said, OK, let me look into tents. And I looked into tents and I could not find a tent that would fit my theater. Most of these tents go up in the middle, 10 feet, 12 feet, but they do not go 13, 14 feet in the air in terms of like in a square or rectangular shape. It doesn't happen. They're not an even space. So. Those tents usually run to about 150, 200, 300 bucks, depending on the quality. So I said, okay, I'm gonna have to build it. So I began to look into materials to build it, and I can't, it came down to, okay, what's a lightweight? Because I couldn't have a tarp that was too heavy, because again, I'm traveling around in a car at the time. And I'm also uh, thinking about you don't want something that causes too much weight to come down on your tent where it falls. So I ended up getting black tarp, which is like uh, trash bag material which worked well because I can use it again and again and it's still waterproof, it worked really well. And then I also use uh, closet rods. The reason I use those because you have a lot of uh, holes in those rods where I can insert and create different heights. So, and I also bought some hammers and a couple other things to make sure this all works. So to in total between the tarp, between the rods, between the hammer and the other materials, I spent another hundred bucks. Okay, so a hundred bucks for all of that. So now we're talking $1,300. And at $1,300, now I was ready to really put myself out there. So another thing I did during this process, I took pictures of me building, me trying to put this together. So I started my advertising early for free. I didn't spend money on this. This is before I did my first Facebook ad. I went ahead and I spent money to make sure people knew what it was going on. I would post about it, use social media to my advantage. So I did that. And then I finally said, you know, this is coming. I took videos. I put that out there. I said, look, this is coming. This is coming. This is coming. Get the hype up there. And then uh, eventually that was available. So my first booking was uh, word of mouth. It was my cousin who heard that somebody else was throwing a birthday party. They wanted to show a movie. They recommended me. Got it done. And then after that, I probably had another five, six shows before I spent any money on social media. So now we're going to transition into the marketing costs. We got up to twelve, thirteen hundred for just buying the basic things that were needed. We talked about the free marketing that I did in terms of making sure to put myself out there, show my videos, show myself making everything. Uh, we talked about the motivation, but let's talk about the actual Facebook dollars that I spent since I've opened back in July. OK, again, this is uh, November 2020. So we're about five months in. And in total, I've spent. Drum roll. One hundred and seventy five dollars roughly on Facebook ads. And from that one hundred and seventy five dollars on Facebook, ads, I've generated over five thousand dollars in revenue. 
So I want you to think about that. I've generated over $5,000. I'm sorry, the company, let me be clear. The company has generated over $5,000 in revenue off of $175 roughly. And I might be off, it might be 120, 150, 175, 180. It's not 200, it's less than $200. I know that much. In 90 days, that's what I've spent and that's what I've generated. All of this from a simple idea and a recognition of there's a need that people have. You have a passion for this. Let's figure out a way to fulfill it. Now, where did I get my own money from? And we're talking about this $1,200. I didn't get it from loans. Look, I had investments sitting in other accounts. I knew that the stock market was going in a certain direction. I said, you know what? I'm pulling some of that money out. I still have my long-term investments. I still have money over there. I said, I'm pulling some of that money out and I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to put my money up for this business. And I can tell you, of course, I've already thrown that out there. I've made back my $1,200 plus, plus some. Now, after those initial costs, okay, I also bought a uh, 33-foot projector screen, which uh, came to about uh, 800 bucks. I bought an inflatable room, which was another 800 I've spent money um, based on the money that's come in. But everything that I've paid for from the very beginning, even my marketing, even having people stage uh, different things for pictures and all that, some of my driving shows, no matter what, all of the money that I've spent, the company has made that back plus some. And all of that started from just not being scared. I can't emphasize to you enough how much of this is doing what makes sense, having good timing, and simply not being afraid to fail in front of people. From the very beginning, I put myself out there. People could laugh. Some people said, well, that's stupid. That didn't make sense. But I can tell you that today, on the eve of our biggest event, the Tyson versus Jones fight, our driving event, I feel great. And I feel great because I've come such a long way in just five months, but it all started with just having the goal to get out there and do something. Now, no one can teach you that. That's something that's been in me. Okay. I've been that. I, some people say that's a be more, a Baltimore. Or some people say that's a Baltimore attitude. And you know, that comes with the territory. Okay. Chalk it up. It's part of Baltimore, part of my parents. People put that in me. I don't know. I was born with it, whatever. But what I'm telling you is that no matter if, if you're born with it or if it's something you can produce, now is not the time to be scared. Now is the time to produce and come up with good things. And 2020 and 2021, this is how you do it. Now, keep watching more episodes will expose what we've been doing and what we have to come, which are bigger things. But understand it all started with initiative and some of my personal money and sacrifice. But it wasn't more than what most of you have. All right, guys, until the next time, subscribe, like, share. I appreciate you.